So today we'll learn the experiment of single sideband suppression, modulation and demodulation. For this we need the modulating signal and carrier signal. So the modulating signal is generated using this block. We can adjust the frequency and amplitude of FM that is modulating signal. Also there is a phase shift network and there is a potentiometer to adjust the phase shift of the modulating signal that is FM. So firstly let's, let's observe the FM signal that is modulating signal and phase shifted modulating signal that is FM plus 90. So I'm connecting the probes to FM and FM plus 90. So the frequency of this modulating signal to 1 kilohertz. So for that we'll press major on the DSO. We can see the frequency currently is 5.2 kilohertz. We'll adjust this to 1 kilohertz. And the amplitude peak to peak to be adjusted to around 200 to 300 millivolts. After we have adjusted the frequency and amplitude of modulating signal, now we'll adjust the phase shift between these two signals. For adjusting the phase shift, let's use the XY mode method. For that, go into utility, display and format as XY. To adjust the phase shift of 90 degree between FM and FM plus 90, the phase shift potentiometer is to be adjusted such that this pattern on the screen is perfect circle which indicates that the phase shift between FM and FM plus 90 is exactly 90 degree. So by adjusting this, we will now move on to the adjustment of phase shift between carrier and carrier plus 90. So here we will adjust again the Lisa just pattern to be circle. If you go on increasing the amplitude of carrier, the Lisa just pattern gets disturbed. So keep the amplitude of the carrier smaller so as to get a perfect circle as the Lisa just pattern. We'll come back to the normal YT mode. Adjust the amplitude to around 300 millivolts. After we have adjusted the phase shifts of modulating signal and carrier signals, let's move on to the connections of DSB generator 1 and DSB generator 2. The modulating signal FM is to be given to the FM input of DSB generator 1. FM plus 90 is to be given to the FM plus 90 input of DSB generator 2. Carrier is to be connected to the FC input of DSB generator 2 and FC plus 90 is to be connected to the FC plus 90 input of DSB generator 1. With this, let's now observe the DSB outputs. DSB generator 1 output to one channel and DSB generator 2 output to the second channel of the DSB. Here we can see the DSB outputs of generator 1 and generator 2. Now we can see that the lobes are uneven or unequal. To make them equal or even, we have potentiometers coming with these DSP generators. So we'll adjust these potentiometers available at the center of the generators so that the lobes of the DSP output can be made even or equal. Right? Now we have made them equal. You can observe by stopping the DSO, we can observe the lobes or the outputs of DSB generators. We can see that the DSB generators generate the outputs alternately. So when the DSB generator 1 has its highest peak of the lobe, the second generator has 0 or minimum output and so on. Now these two outputs will be added to generate the SSP output. So let's do the connection for that. DSB generator 1 output to 1 input of the adder. DSB generator 2 output to another input of the adder. And here we can see 
at the output of the SSB generator, we can see the SSB output. We will observe this with reference to the modulating signal. So the second channel I am connecting to the modulating signal. Now here you, we can see channel 1 is the modulating signal and channel 2 is the SSB output which is addition of two DSB outputs. DSB gen with this we will move on to the demodulation of SSB signal. For this we will do the connections. SSB output to the SSB input of SSB demodulator and as this is coherent demodulation or coherent detection, we need the same carrier which was used at the transmitter site that is FC to be connected on the demodulator or detector or the receiver site. So the same carrier is given here and now we can observe the output of SSB demodulator with reference to the modulating signal. So if we compare this yellow colored modulating signal with the blue colored demodulated signal, we can observe that the waveforms are quite similar to each other. There is certain distortion, but the wave shifts are quite similar. Frequency of the demodulated signal and the modulating signal both are same and the peak to peak amplitudes are also quite comparable, similar comparable. So this is how we can demodulate the SSB modulated signal using coherent detection method. Now we'll go back to the SSB output and observe its spectrum to measure its bandwidth. So I'm now again connecting the probe to the SSB output and we'll move on to the procedure of observing the spectrum for which we use the FFT mode, press FFT. We have connected the SSB output to channel two. So the source is to be selected to be channel two and here we can see the spectrum of the SSB signal. Window is to be selected to be hanging and check the spectrum at the center of the screen and then zoom it by five. So here we can see this single sideband available at the center of the screen. So this is the single sideband spectrum of SSB modulated signal. And to measure the bandwidth of this, we have to use cursor. Source should be FFT. Type should be frequency as we are measuring bandwidth. And then use cursor 1. Set it at the peak of the sideband, single sideband. And we can measure the bandwidth here as the cursor 1 reading that is 71.80 kilohertz.